Looking at the front of the GLB, the first thing that catches your eyes is the big grille. Important here is our car is featuring the AMG trim level. That means we have this big central star and one pillar on each side. If you do drive the standard version, you do find two of them on each side. But of course, there is the most sporty version, the AMG, and that then features the so-called Panamericana grille, which looks like a big mouth at the front of the car. To give the car a bit more of sportiness, you find this very nice, sharp design splitter down here. And to underline the power of the car, you find these two big power dumps on the hood, which I really do like a lot. An idea of the designers regarding to the GLB was to make the car look higher because then you will not see the length of the car. And this is something they start with at the front because you find not only these very nicely big eyes here with the headlamps, you also do find a daytime running light which also gives the height of the car an extra push. Important is to know the car comes as standard with alloy uh, headlamps but you of course can have multi-beam LED lights as well or ultra range uh, full beam light if you want as well. But important is the car comes with very nice big eyes and I think the front is quite nice. Gear shifting with the GLB always works with an automatic gearbox. Most of the engines, they deliver an 8-speed, but the smallest petrol is only a 7-speed gearbox. Important here is to know there will be a new entrance model coming a bit later, which is the GLB 180, that then also will feature a 7-speed automatic gearbox. The bigger engines, they come as formatic systems, which means you can have all-wheel drive as well. Important competitors of the GLB are the Honda CRV and the Toyota RAV4. The Mercedes GLB starts with a 163 horsepower 1.4 liter petrol and automatic transmission. The Honda offers 173 horsepower from a 1.5 liter and manual transmission. And the also manual shifted Toyota features 175 horsepower from a 2 liter. All three basic models are front wheel powered. At 4 meters 63 in length, the Mercedes is 3 centimeters longer than the vehicles of Honda and Toyota. And so the Mercedes offers with 1,800 liters about 45 liters more maximum load capacity than the CRV and 110 liters more than the RAV4. My test car is featuring the 2 liter 4 cylinder diesel engine with 140 kilowatt or 190 horsepower. And that delivers 400 newton meters of maximum torque and is always combined with an 8 speed automatic gearbox. This package really makes perfect sense. It is quite smooth and easy and an absolutely enjoyable drive. Gear shifting is something you will not even recognize. And if you want to drive a bit more dynamic, you just push the pedal to the metal, the car just makes whoop and then it really delivers the power you expect and you want and so you can have fun if you want. The four-cylinder diesel of my Mercedes GLB 220D Formatic should consume only 5.4 liters per 100 km driven, according to the datasheet. During my test drive, the onboard computer shows me 6.2 liters. Nevertheless, for a 190 horsepower and about 1,700 kg SUV, not a bad number. The GLB is in principle a very quiet, very comfortable car, but if you drive on, let's say, tarmac, which is a bit more old, a bit more rough, you get some noise, which um, reminds me to a bigger room. So it really feels like you're in a larger room, even though you're sitting in a small car. So this is the only way I can describe it. It's nothing that really disturbs you, but it's something you need to get used to. Looking at the side of the car, the first thing you really see are these big wheels here. But important is the car comes as standard on 17-inch alloys, but if you have the money and you want, you can order up to 20-inch as well. When you look at the whole car, the car is 4 meters 63 long, which means it's about 20 centimeters longer than the actual B-Class. But I think more important is the wheelbase is 10 centimeters. The rest of the 20 comes from the rear of the car. But this 2 meters 83 length for the wheelbase really gives you loads of extra space at the interior. And this is the reason why this car is the first optional seven seater. Mercedes said that it was very important for them regarding to the design to make the car look a bit shorter than it really is. And they did some nice things to make this happen. So for instance, if you look, this line here gives a, an extra kick to the top here. And that um, makes it that when you look at the side of the car, you stop looking here. And so the car looks shorter than it is. Another thing is we have quite high 
windows of the side and that makes the car look higher than it is and this on the other hand makes the car look shorter as well but very important with the car is of course it is an SUV and therefore it does not only feature 20 centimeters of ground clearance it also features these wheel arch claddings and the claddings here on the side because this gives the car the more robust look. The GLB looks from the side a bit like a small GLS but I think from the rear this is a lot more impressive and there are two reasons for that. One is we have this very nicely shaped shoulders here and we have this quite steep rear um, lid of the boot and that really gives the car the unique and very massive look. Um, important with the car is it features always not only this very nice signature it also features always LED technology with the taillights and when you look down here you find a nice diffuser and this chrome um, output of the exhaust which looks very nice but with the AMG version we have round outputs which makes the car look even more sporty and when we talk about this very steep part here that is the reason for the size of the boot when we look into it the GLB features 560 liters of maximum boot capacity with the rear seats up that increases up to 1755 when you fold them down and you can fold them down 40 20 40 and that really is a I think quite nice number for this segment of course but that's for the five seater so if it will be the seven seater you of course have a bit less because of the seats which are mounted here You know, the GLB is the eighth uh, member of our family in the compact car segment and uh, it's a compact SUV and uh, we have two different target groups we, we want to address with this. On the one hand we have the customers um, with kids in, in the household which need a lot of variability in their vehicle and who have to, 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 to install child seats for example. On the other hand we have those customers being very outdoor oriented who also want to have for their sports activities etc. a lot of flexibility in their vehicle. Of course the GLB looks a lot like a standard road car but on the other hand it is an SUV and this is the reason why I take that car off-road now. The GLB I'm driving features the so-called off-road package and with that one on board you do have an extra drive mode which is called off-road and with that the whole setup of the car is perfectly made to drive on not standard roads. So now we have big potholes. Let's see how the car works through this. So now it goes uphill. Let's see if the car can climb. It doesn't look like, but it really works like one of the big ones. For us, the, the biggest thing about it is really the combination of the variability with all the assets we bring with our compact car family, like the innovations when it comes to safety equipment, etc. When we talk about variability, it's for example the fully movable second seat row, the third seat row, which makes it a seven seater on a very, very small footprint of only four meters and, and 60 centimeters. So we think this brings the two worlds together of the compact um, vehicles and of the SUVs, which makes it for us a very, very um, comprehensive compact SUV. In comparison, the Mercedes seems quite expensive with a starting price for the GLB 200 of just under 38,000 euros. The price list of the CRV starts at 28,990 euros and the RAV4 at 30,690 euros in Germany. But if you want a 7-seater, which is available at the Mercedes for around 1,300 euros extra, you have to order the model lifestyle at Honda, which then costs over 38,000 euros. Every new Mercedes is featuring MUX, so the new infotainment system of Mercedes and the new GLB does this as well. And I really do like uh, these two big screen here covered under one piece of glass. It really provides me with all the information I need, very nicely displaced. I can change the modes, the look and the content it presents, so quite nice and easy. On top you get the new voice control system of Mercedes included in MBUX which really gives you a native torque to your car. I really do like this a lot and with the steering wheel you have the knobs and the button to control the whole panels so you don't have to take away your fingers or hands from the steering wheel while driving.
Space is a very important key feature of the new GLB. And I have to say, sitting in that car, the front seats, even me as a tall person, I do sit very comfortably and have loads of space. If you see hat space, this is about the amount of space I have uh, until I reach the glass ceiling or about three centimeters to this, this pillar here, which is not something usual for a compact car. And I do sit quite upright, but how much space is behind me? Let's find out while having a short stop. So this is my stop to see if I can sit behind me in the GLB. As you see, I didn't change my seating position. So let's check. It should be big. As you see, a very easy entrance. And as you can see, I'm nearly two meters tall, but I still have that amount of space in front of my knees. Another important thing is hat space. And as you can see, I still have about two centimeters left. And this is not bad for such a small car. The GLB um, seat, the rear seat is adjustable. So up to 14 centimeters. If you go to the front, it's a bit tight, but you can really adjust the seat to see if you need more space here or more space in the boot. And I think for a compact car, that's quite nice. Unfortunately, our test car does not have the optional third row of seats, so I cannot try how much space it offers there. However, Mercedes says the two additional individual seats should provide sufficient space for persons up to a height of 1,68 m. I really do like the interior design of the GLB a lot. Uh, because you get what you expect from a typical Mercedes and you get a bit more of, let's say, yeah, something more special, more robust. And I really do like this metal stuff here at the dashboard or the door handles or here at the center console, which looks like you just take out a bit of metal out of a, um, a full massive um, piece of metal. And um, I really do like this because this really lifts the, the, uh, the impression a bit to a different level. On the other hand, I'm not quite sure if this is a bit too much of ruggedness or of, let's say, free-minded design for a car which is, in principle, very, very comfortable. On top, you get a lot of these glossy black um, surfaces in the car, which looks very nice, especially in combination with this metal look. But on the other hand, you always see every single bit and piece of dust. The seats of the GLB are very nice. They're very comfortable and they offer more than enough support. Uh, the only thing I would say, if you drive extremely sporty, then you may like to have a bit more of support. But I think the car is not made to be driven as a sports car in principle. The GLB has quite big windows for a Mercedes-Benz. And the good thing with that is you get a very nice surround view. And that means you can always see where your car starts and where it ends. I really do like the uh, suspension of the GLB a lot because that car is stiff enough but without being nervous. And on the other hand, if you drive um, sh tight bends on curves quick, the car doesn't do that at all. That was my test drive with the new Mercedes GLB, the new compact SUV, which comes between GLA and GLC. What I really do like with the car, aside of its unique look, is the room it delivers. I think even in the third row, small people or kids can easily sit there also for a longer drive. And then on the other hand, it's a real Mercedes regarding to quality, regarding to safety and regarding to comfort. On top of this, you get the new driver system and safety systems. You will find MBUX on board and the car really is a pure pleasure to drive. But it's not a bargain. It starts at a little bit less than 38,000 euros, even though Mercedes said there will be a cheaper entrance model in the near future. But if you're looking for a small car with loads of room and you want to drive Mercedes, that's the car you should take for a test drive. <music>